Yeah. So. All right, everybody, welcome back. We're going to go for sinus bradycardia today. We know that bradycardia is defined as a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. So bradycardia is a slow heart rate. If we say a sinus bradycardia, we're saying that the sinus node is beating at a heart rate that is uh, less than 60 beats per minute. Sinus node. So first of all, I want to just go through this rhythm. So we see these narrow QRSs here. Let's get a rate. We know they're quite regular. We know the sinus node is a regular node. It does not beat erratically um, very, very often. If we want to count the, determine the rate of this EKG, this uh, R wave on a solid line, we see 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. This is probably maybe 35 to 40 beats per minute. So absolutely slow. Brady. All right. So we've got a bradycardic rhythm. We know that bradycardia is caused by plenty of things that are not the sinus node. So that's the first thing we need to evaluate in EKG is, are there things like, is this an AV block, right? Is every P creating a QRS? Or is this a ventricular escape rhythm where we have a complete heart block and we're just getting escape beats? We know that this is a narrow QRS, and so that's a really good sign. We see a narrow QRS, it means that the aviator is conducting this down into the ventricles. And so let's just do our normal evaluation. Let's look for maybe here in lead two. We'll see we've got these P waves that are conducting to QRSs, P waves conducting to QRSs. And we don't see any P waves in between that are being missed. So that's reassuring. And I need to determine if it's a, to, to say this is a sinus bradycardia, that means that it, the P waves must be generated by the sinus node. And you, you hear me do this with every EKG. I always look, when I'm evaluating my P waves, I look at lead one, and I look at AVF. And my P waves, if they're upright in one, and if they're upright in AVF, I can say that it's going down to the left, and that is a sinus P wave. And if those P waves are driving the QRS complex, then I can say it's a sinus rhythm. Why do I say that I look at those leads? Well, Look at my coronal slice here, which is my limb leads. These are my limb leads here. And you see my sinus node is located. This is my sinus node. And this is located in the top right of our heart anatomically. So when this fires off, it causes a wave of atrial depolarization across our atria that is going down to the left. And so that wave of depolarization is going to create an upward deflection in lead one because it's going towards lead one, going to the left. And because it's also going down, it's going to cause an upward deflection in the lead that measures downward forces. And so if I have an up in one and an upward in AVF, I know that it has to be in between these two leads. And I know that that means it's anywhere going this direction. So that can determine my, essentially, my P wave axis. We always think of QRS axis, but this is my P wave axis. This is my axis of atrial depolarization. And we know that if it comes from the sinus node, it's coming from the top right and spreading down to the left, and so positive waves will be seen in one, which is my leftward lead, and ADF, which is my downward lead. So when I go back to my EKG, I always do that. When I see P waves, well, where are those P waves coming from? Are they ectopic? Are they sinus? And you correlate that to the behavior, which we know that sinus node behavior is uh, regular, is very predictable. So in this case, we have a narrow QRS that is being driven by these uh, P waves that are upright in one and upright in AVF. And so this is a great example of a sinus bradycardia.
right? We've excluded other causes of bradycardia, and we've verified that this P wave that is driving our rhythm is from the sinus node. Sinus bradycardia isn't always a problem, right? So when you look at this, is this bad? Well, if you look at the clinical scenario, this is a quite a slow heart rate, but some people, really good athletes, if you record this EKG while they're sleeping, this could be normal for them. If this was somebody who had, you know, an altered level of consciousness, sure. Maybe they have chronic ischemic heart disease and that ischemic heart disease affects their SA node. So not all sinus bradycardia is bad, but some bradycardias that are sinus bradycardias can be evidence of chronic disease. So obviously the clinical scenario there is going to dictate, but identifying sinus bradycardia on EKG, big things here. So we're, we're going to see normal conduction through the ventricles because the AV node is conducting it down to the ventricles the way it should be. And obviously, whatever that baseline is for that patient, you know, if they have a left funnel branch block at baseline, you'll see a left funnel branch block. That's okay. That's below the AV node. So that's not going to tell us if it's sinus or not. And when you look at that P wave that is occurring before the QRS is you determine it's sinus and you determine there's no AV blocks. When you look at the rate of sinus node firing, we said that that sinus node's firing quite slow, less than 60. So we got a sinus bradycardia. So I hope this uh, helps and post some questions or comments below.